If you've been using Generate Press as your theme, you've probably had a header menu just like this. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to easily take just a little bit of CSS, which I will provide down in the description, and you could turn this into this, or this, or this, or this. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in learning, then stick around and let's get after it. First things first, let's take a look at how this menu is set up. Just here under Appearance, Menus, I have a primary menu in here with several different items. In this last item, I've actually added a CSS class, which is nav-button. If you don't see the CSS classes option, you can go up to the screen options and make sure that this option is checked. With that done, we can go ahead and save that menu. And let's go take a look at how everything is set up in the customizer. So this is a pretty typical layout for any kind of header. If we go here inside of layout, header, we can see the preset set to current, the header width is full, and the inner header width is set to contained. I do have just a little bit of padding on the top and bottom. Here for the navigation, I have this set to float right, and everything else is pretty much default out of the box how it comes inside Generate Press. But what we're going to do is show you a few different lines of CSS where you can drastically change the look and feel of this menu. This should work across any Generate Press site, so you can copy and paste this code from the link down in the description. And speaking of copy and pasting, instead of typing all this out, I am going to copy and paste it as we go just to make it easier. But I'll go ahead and explain each one of these step by step. The first bit we're going to paste in just kind of sets the stage for all these different menu options. So you can copy and paste this, and essentially it's going to move this navigation over to the left, and it's even though you can't see it, it's making the entire navigation span 100% of that available width. Now the first one we're going to look at is just moving this last menu item all the way over to the right. So we'll copy and paste that line of code. And to explain what this is doing, this is just grabbing the main navigation, then grabbing the list items that are inside that, and it's saying it needs to talk to the last child. So the last child, of course, is this last menu item. And what we've done is just add a margin left of auto. This goes ahead and pushes this all the way over to the side by giving it all the margin it can give it until it runs into the next item. So just like that, we have this setup where we have the most of the navigation on the left and then one menu item over here onto the right, which is always good for a call to action. But of course, you're probably gonna want that to look like a button. Now there are all kinds of ways you can make buttons inside of your menu. If you use Generate Press Pro, you can use the Elements feature to bring in a button. But a lot of times what I'll do is just style that last item with CSS so I can keep everything inside my menu. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in this little bit of CSS that's just going to turn this last item into something that resembles a button. Again, you can just copy and paste this. Essentially, all it's doing is adding a color for the text, a background color, and some border radius. On hover, it's just changing that background color to red. Now there are many cases where you might have some kind of registration or buy button here, and you want a login link next to it for the people who are already your customers. So we can just pretend this contact link is the login link we want to move over, and instead of having this one pushed over by itself, we actually want to move this one with it. And that's a pretty easy fix. All we need to do is replace one of these lines of code here. So this one that has the last child, we're just going to go ahead and delete that out of there and replace it with this one. What this one's doing is saying the nth last child to. Basically what that means is the second to last child. So instead of giving the last child a margin auto, now we're just giving the second to last child a margin auto. So just like that, we can have the navigation on the left, this call to action, and another link on the right. Now sometimes there's a text-based logo like what you see here with the text link, sometimes that can look a little crowded. If you just had some kind of icon, this can look pretty decent. But for me, if I have a text logo and these text links, I actually want to give a little bit more space here. One easy way to do that is to just center align all those main navigation items. So I'm going to paste in one last line of code here that's going to center align all of these items. So essentially all this code is doing is saying, the first child in the navigation, which is this home link, also give it a margin left of auto. So it's going to push it all the way away from this logo, and it's going to distribute the space in between the logo and the nav, and this part of the navigation and the part we moved over. It's going to split the difference there and make those even. So just like that, we've created 
basically four different navigation layouts with just a few simple lines of CSS. Hopefully you can find some good use for these different kinds of headers. I know I like to do a little bit more modern look with some of my navigation menus, and this does the trick really easily. If you enjoy videos like this, we have plenty more of them here on our channel with a couple popping up right here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next tutorial that comes out. We'll catch you on that one.